Father, we thank you, Lord God, for your word. Lord God, we just thank you, Lord God, that you watch over your word and perform it, Father. Lord, we just thank you, Lord, for the joy of knowing you, oh God, for the joy of reading your word, oh God. Father, we ask your blessing upon this time, oh God, that Lord, <clears throat> each one, oh God, we would receive, oh God, what you have for us, Lord. So Father, we give you all the praise and all the glory in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So we're gonna have a com we're gonna have a conversation tonight. As I said before, Bishop is sick, so he called me um, probably about six twenty or somewhere <laughs> in that. And um, he was just saying that he was sick, and and he said um, he didn't know what to do with Bible study. I said, well, we can we can go on. Um, and he said, well, you know, whatever you want to do. So I figured since we're talking about ascension, it's it's just good to stay on topic. Just just to see what God will give us all collectively. So I thank you all for um, coming and those that are asked and anybody, this is an open conversation. So I don't, I, just, I was just picking on certain people because it's just, you know, when God leads you a certain way, that's, that's what I'm gonna do. So I don't want any of you to be ready um, uh, to do that. Um, so I just thinking about last, I was thinking about last night and those of us that were on last night, and when um, Elder Glenn was talking about um, the topic last night, persevering in the word, and there came a point of the topic where it says, um, those are watching last night, at some point, God's got to take the training wheels off, right? Mm. <laughs> and this is, what, this is, I feel like, you know, sometimes God sets us up to see what we're going to do in the midst of that. And so even, even, and we, and, and we're, we're, I want everybody to just pray that, you know, God will uh, see Bishop well. And um, as, as a church, as we're ascending, th these moments like this will happen, um, but they'll probably happen unexpectedly where he, where maybe we're left to lead in a particular way because Bishop is on a particular assignment. So the training wheels are off tonight, okay? Just keep keeping that main. The, the training wheels are off. So now it's up to each and every one of us individually to see what, how are we going to be able to handle um, uh, when things like this happen. And it's just taking us to a different level, taking us to another level. And um, I was thinking about just looking at um, this ascension and um, what's, I, I, I wanted to, get a, um, a regular definition and it's the act of rising to an important position or higher higher level or degree and you know when we're ascending in God and where God wants to take us we have to be in position and position doesn't mean title position is just more of just being ready you know, the Bible talks about us be also ready you don't know when your time is coming you don't know you may not have but a few minutes to get ready, but you know, we, we're being ready. And then um, as we go to this higher level, how does this affect us personally and collectively? And that's uh, when I, uh, you know, um, it's the vision of a spiritual journey. So that's individual journey and a collective journey and a closer examination and seeking God and following you know, as we ascend. Now, one thing, um, this closer examination, I think, um, you know, when we take communion and it says, let a man examine himself. And, and as we go higher in God, and as we ascend to the various areas of where God is taking the church and the ministry and the fellowship, we are going to have to really have a close examination or a close talk with us within, within from within. And um, it's more of a self-awareness and an emotional intelligence when it comes to how we, how we uh, react, how we control our own selves and how we uh, react to and situations and how um, we can handle different things when it comes to the body, us individually, and us uh, being in our various positions. Um, uh, I'm not talking about title position. I'm just talking about being in the position of God. Um, how are we going to handle that? And, um, you know, 
a lot of times, you know how we go, you hear, you hear, you hear the phrase of higher heights and deeper depths. And, you know, people use that loosely, but going higher in God, people think it's this, you know, it's almost like, I have to give you a visual, it's like climbing a ladder. And that's not, you're not so much, you're not climbing a physical, we're climbing in our spiritual step. But what does that mean? That means stretching ourselves than what we would, things that we maybe slacked up on. Like, I don't know how many of you study in a different way, but you know, this ascension got me thinking, I used to read one chapter of the Bible, but I would read it in six or seven versions of the Bible. And I would, you know, throughout the week, that would be my study, just one chat, I would take one chapter and I would read seven, several versions and then try to break those words down in uh, Hebrew and Greek. And I used to be real intense with it and kind of slacked up, but this, this ascension, this, this going in closer to examination is like, we got to be a little bit more than where we were. We have to be even ahead of where we were. So I want to get your thoughts on that. Um, um, and any, uh, um, uh, about that closer, because I want to deal with that closer examination, because I think this is something that we all um, deal with on a daily basis, how, 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 how much insight do we have within ourselves? I'm not talking about getting a word from God to give to the people. I'm talking about a, in a, uh, a closer examination of oneself when it comes to you and God and then how God uh, and you and the body of Christ as a whole. Um, Pastor Baytop, any thoughts on that? Um. As far as that's concerned, um, even when you're looking at yourself, I, mm -hmm. I just me, just me personally, I even when looking at myself, or even when just generally, or even uh, uh, you know, introspectively, I tend to ask God just a simple question: God, what is your perspective? Mm -hmm. And I think that's so important in 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 in. in I mean, in, in, in anything, because sometimes if we're not careful, we can overanalyze. You know what I'm saying? We can, we mm -hmm. can, we can get into ourselves and then we start beating ourselves up and start beating ourselves down. And that's not, that's not ascension. That's actually going, that's actually going down. So I think that, you know, in this and even close ex examination, find out what God, how do you see me in mm -hmm. this, where I am, where I am right now, where I'm at. Or where I am, excuse me. How do you see me? What is your perspective? Because that's that's what we need. It's not just what we see or what we think we see or or what we may know, but what does God see? And, and what what does what what is God's examination of us? Uh, that's that's about it. I mean, because I think mm -hmm. it's so it's so important because God sees us and God looks at us sometimes in a whole different manner than we when we look at ourselves. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and um. It's, it's so, um, it, it's like what I read today, because we had, um, I'm in this program at work and it's called um, Aspire and it's about preparing, it's, it's literally to try to prepare people for this retirement of, over the years of people and, and, and put and trying to prepare them to get them to go into leadership roles. And, and I, we had to write, read an assignment about exam, uh, self-awareness and um, emotional intelligence. And when you say that, how does God see me? That's, you know, when we pray about that, and sometimes we don't want to face, because one of the lines in there is we don't want to face what we see, but we need to really get feedback from others. And as we seek God on in that, sometimes God will send other people to give us insight about our own self and about um, our uh, examination. Um, I want to, um, who, who else? That? Pastor Jerry, any thought? Well, um, I have a couple of thoughts. You know, um, the Bible does talk about uh, examining yourself. Um, uh, also, that's in Second uh, Corinthians, I uh, believe it's chapter uh, two. Uh, also, when Haggai talks about considering our ways. And mm. but when it, it has been uh, related to, I believe, ascension, 
uh, one of the things that came to my mind when we talk about we're going to ascend in this season. Well, what are, what are we ascending to? Mm -hmm. You know, uh, you know, are, are you are you ascending where? What 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 was what does that really mean to you? You know, uh, and and I think a lot of that ascension first you do have to uh, examine yourself. You do have to consider your own ways. Uh, am I in the will of God? You know, mm -hmm. I think that's what it comes down to because he talks about, you know, we're, we're supposed to be doing greater works. We're supposed to be walking in our purpose. We're supposed to be on our kingdom assignment. We're supposed to be making disciples of men. We're supposed to be uh, being an example of God's love and the light in the earth and the light in the world and the salt in the earth. So, you know, we have to take a look at where we're at, you know, uh, we, where, where we have been increasing uh, in prayer, we, we, we've been fasting, you know, at the beginning of this year and things of that nature. Uh, but what is, and, and, you know, I was thinking about that, the first, the first thing that you said, because I, I don't, I don't, all of my mind, I was thinking about everything that you were saying, you uh -huh. know, uh, what, what, what is that vision that you have, you know, um, and I thought about how we have a, uh, we should have a personal vision, and we should have a collective vision as well, you know, for, for the body of Christ, for the church, uh, I, I was just thinking about how I'm just I'm I'm just as guilty. Like when the last time have I read the vision for the church? You know, uh, mm -hmm. you know the Bible tells us with our vision. You know, uh, you know we, uh, where we perish. So mm -hmm. you know what, what what is the vision? What what is the purpose? What are you ascending to? What what is it that uh, you believe God has called you to do in this season? So. And I know I'm talking and I'm putting more questions out there than answers, mm -hmm. but just to uh, bring a little bit more dialogue, you know, to what people are thinking as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and this is, I, um, for those of us that are joining us, we're having an open conversation about Ascension. And you can see in the chat what we're talking about, um, Bishop Six. So just keep them in prayer. And this felt as though um, we just need to continue on. And just if those of you that were on last night when Elder Glenn was talking about um, the training wheels coming off, I think, you know, a lot of times God tests us in some of the things that um, he get ready to prepare us in. And so um, Prophetess Danielle Mitchell, any thought on um, closer examination? You there? All right, Sister Carol, I'm going to go to you. <laughs> My thoughts are, um, when we're talking about close examination, first of all, our vision, our spiritual journey is our own spiritual journey. And sometimes, and what is, when we do it, when we're looking at our spiritual journey, it is um, to uh, find out who we are, where we're going, and what we're going to do. Sometimes it doesn't um, come to come to an end, but it's a learning process. Mm -hmm. And I believe that once we start this, once we realize what our um, spiritual journey, or once we realize what it is, then we need to examine it very close. We need to examine um, where we're going, what we're doing within. Are there things within us that we need to fix or change? This is all part of the journey. Mm -hmm. And I believe we, we need to closer examine our environment, who we're with, where we are, what we're doing. We, all this is part of our spiritual journey because it is ours and ours alone. It is our individual journey. And there's mm -hmm. things that we need to fix up through this journey because there, it is a process. Mm -hmm. Dr. Donnie, any thoughts? Okay, can you hear me clearly? Yep. We can hear so, you. Um, so, so thanks, thanks, Pastor Charles, for just giving us the opportunity to share and have this discussion. I think, um, and um, just really, really appreciate everything else, or every, all the other insight that everyone else added as well. Um, and we're probably going to like overlap, overlap with the, a lot of ideas, but you know, my thoughts are, my thoughts are that um, one, I, one, I think everything is spiritual and a lot of people will probably disagree with me, but I think everything that pertains to your life is, is a spiritual and is a spiritual journey. 
um, because God created it out of nothing. And, and he's, he's put us in, in situations and environments and in positions out of nowhere. And so if God is moving spiritually to put us in physical places, it's, a, it's for a spiritual reason. And I think, um, I think just another layer, if you will, and another texture to, to, to uh, close examination is, is tracking what God is doing mm-hmm. and what God has said and what God, is, um, what God has said, what God is doing and, and what's occurring now and really align, al- aligning that, balancing that, um, really figuring that part out. Um, as to as to how close, if you will, you are to or or, or if you're in the actual rhythm of the Lord, and mm-hmm. what I mean by the rhythm of the Lord, I mean your, your daily life. Your you know the Bible says that your steps are ordered by the Lord. A, a good man's steps, rather, are ordered by the Lord. And as as our steps, I believe everybody in here um, is qualified under that quote unquote good man. I think he's talking about each and every one of us, but. Um, your steps, the people that you meet, the people that you work with, your family, where you live, mm-hmm. has been set up for you to, if you will, bombard with, 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 with Jesus, meaning the Lord Jesus Christ, Holy Spirit that lives inside of you, has purposely put you in a place. And so, I, so adding that other layer to cross, to not cross-examining, but um, closely examining uh, we might be losing you here. I think we're 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 getting you distorted. We're going to come back to you because we, we, we got to distort it from you. So, I, do you know the other thing I want to talk about this? Um, oh, Elder Glenn, you're joining us. Um, uh, I was, we, we're having a conversation, uh, open conversation about um, um, ascension, but it's in, a, it's in a chat that there's other aspects of it. But something that came to mind because Bishop is sick tonight and something that you said last night about um, the training wheels. And we're in one of those testing moments where the training wheels are off. <laughs> um, I wanted to bring to y'all attention Joshua chapter one. And um, hold on, where is it? Okay, Joshua chapter one, starting at um, the tenth verse. So, you know, when we think about ascension and thinking about self examination and our spiritual journey, uh, vision of spiritual journey, seeking and following. What do we need to do in order to prepare? So Joshua, when Joshua is taken over, is taken over, Joshua 1 verse 10 um, says, then Joshua commanded the officers of the people saying, pass through the camp and command the people saying, prepare provisions for yourselves for within three days, you will cross over this Jordan and go into go into and possess the land which the Lord your God has given to you to possess. I want you to think about that particular set of verses in dealing with ascension and how God is get, sends, the, sends Joshua to tell um, the offers, officers to command the people, prepare provisions for yourselves. And they're not just doing it just for themselves. It's actually for all of them, but prepare provisions for yourself. And in this crossing over and self-examination, what are you individually preparing yourself as you, as God takes you in this process of ascending in a different level or a different mindset or a different um, um area of what he wants you to do um because we have to like we said we always have to be prepared in a sense but there's sometimes people aren't prepared and they're left and it wasn't that 
I think a lot of times when I read Joshua, it wasn't that he didn't, he wasn't prepared because he was with his leader. He, he trained up under Moses and he came along. So he was taken, uh, Moses took him with him at times. And so I wanna ask you all a question um, as we we're thinking about ascension. Do you think you're prepared enough? And if you do, um, is there, do you think there, well, we always know there's more. Is there something specific that God wants you to do? And anybody can answer that question. Anybody can answer. Do you think you're prepared enough to ascend to where God is taking, not just, not just you individually, um, but you and where you are in the in the body of Christ as it pertains to God's whole body and your local church. Anybody can answer or any if they want to share their thoughts on that. Because you know, we're all crossing over into another or sending into another place in God. Now, if nobody don't ask, I'm gonna call on you. <laughs> I'll, Pastor I'll, Charles, um, oh, oh. there you go. Good. Go ahead, Danielle. Um, I, okay, I was I was going to say that's a very multi layered question. Yeah. Um, part of partly because I always think of preparedness as something that's never complete, right? right. And so mm -hmm. you are constantly being prepared as you are prepared, right? So mm -hmm. it's like the mm -hmm. already and not yet. We talk about um, in other aspects of our our holy living. But the other, the other nuance to that is, I feel like in terms of ascension, sometimes you have to look at, I can only, ascend. it's almost like if everyone is connected and, and everyone is cohesive, I mm -hmm. can only extend myself as far as the group will go, right? Mm -hmm. So if everybody's tethered together, then mm -hmm. you have to examine I might be exceedingly quote unquote ready, not me personally, but I'm just saying right. and hypothetically, and mm -hmm. I'm ready and I'm ready to run. You know, it could be mm -hmm. Bishop, it could be anybody, it could be a collective mm -hmm. group of people, they ready, they ready to go. But because God looks at the entirety of the body, if mm -hmm. your, your eyes are healthy, but your hearing is dull, you can have excellent um, vision, but you mm -hmm. might be a little bit, for lack of a better term, handicapped in other areas. And so when you talk about individual as well as a collective or cohesive congealed body, mm -hmm. those two answers can be different and yet the same because I'm still hindered. Like I can't go farther than the weakest link for lack of a better term. And of course right. I'm saying that in general, I don't, I don't, I know and so you that's mean. why I said it's, it's nuanced. So right. I think there's a lot of effort, energy, and intention that has to be put on the collective so that as mm -hmm. a as a unit, we can mm -hmm. progress. And then I'll also say this too, I was talking to another uh, person, the leadership team, and, and thinking about ascension after I had, after I just gave a word, and it's like mm -hmm. sometimes ascension doesn't happen all in the same place at the same time. We don't all ascend at the same rate. Mm -hmm. um, and what does that look like for the, the collective? Right. And, and, you know, and like I said, this is for, for, for us to grow together. And like you said, it's, it's all different. It's just, there's, yeah, I know I asked a lot of multi-layer questions and that's one of the things, like, even in my, in my under, like, as I ascend, God, I'm trying to be more specific where you want me to be or what more specific of what you want me to target on, or as, as a body, you know, we're, we're targeting on a lot of different things. You know, we're we're a very prophetic church. Um, um, it it moves and flows very differently. Um, some people have a level of, of understanding of prophecy, where other people don't have an understanding of level of prophecy, and it's it, and it varies and what's muddled in between. And um, and I and I use that word prepare because. The church was what was prior to the pandemic is going to be so much different after this pandemic is over. It is a different church. And a lot of people aren't, um, when I say prepared, and it, like you say, multi-level. I had a friend of mine who um, was in prison and um, they're, re they're very well-versed in the word of God. They're very, uh, um, what is a whole lot of things? Um, 
going on there, but they're very well versed in the word. They're very well versed in teaching. And they always talk about um, the church after this pandemic and what it looks like for when it, when, like when you have a whole group of people coming out of prison and they're going to be looking for something or a whole group of people that are coming out of their deliverance or walking, you know, walking in their deliverance or coming out of deliverance, going through various trials that, that they may not know that are about to happen. And a lot of times um, as a body, it's very difficult because we are dealing with a whole different generation of things, you know, th just things like when I will say I'm 47. So when I was uh, 20, I'll say no. So when I was about 10, 12, 13, we, there wasn't this whole identity issue like there is now, you know what I mean? And some people are not prepared or able to handle that because they're only going to look at it one way. And I'm not talking about looking at it any other direction. I know Bible, the, the Bible, how do you handle certain things? And so I'm gonna move on to um, um, vision, um, seeking and following. So how do you move people into an area when the world is saying, oh, you can be who you wanna be, but you're trying to follow Jesus too? Because I had a conversation with somebody, at what point are we to hold the line and hold people accountable. And I'm not talking about judgment. I'm just saying the Bible says this. We know At what the Bible all says. Points. And, uh, and it, the, uh, <laughs> that we where we hold the line because you know some people are we see the double standard, we see the hypocrisy. And you know what? It's hard for people trying to hold the line to try to, I would hate to use that phrase, but I'm gonna just use that for lack of a better word, but try to hold, hold a standard and keep the standard in place, keep the standard in place, you know, and trying to bring people to the standard and not let them get away from the standard because we, we see that's been going on for a while, but it seems like it's getting more and more and we're getting more away from where God wants us to be. So seeking and following, when it comes to ascension, anybody have any thoughts on that? It could be anybody. Uh, Pastor Charles, um, yes. When I when I think of ascension, I don't think of it as a place or whatever. Mm -hmm. When I think of it, I think of it, of it as operating in the spirit realm. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, the only way we can accomplish anything and even relate to those uh, individuals that we know are coming or are here or wherever is that we have to ascend in the spirit, you know, because the spirit know of all things. We don't, mm -hmm. we don't. So, so for me, this whole ascension level or ascension um, season of ascension is really getting more in tune to the spirit of God. Mm -hmm. you know the holy spirit you know because the holy spirit is going to lead us and guide us mm -hmm. into all truth so that's the only way we can do anything i mean we can't even help ourselves or help anyone else unless we have a real uh a, a sin to a closer and a deeper depth in walking in the spirit and operating in the spirit realm so mm -hmm. that's that's where i'm I'm thinking this whole ascension and whole uh, everything is it's in the spirit. And so I'm really doing everything I can in this season of ascension to mm -hmm. know and understand what the Holy Spirit is saying and where he's leading me and leading us as a mm -hmm. ministry. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? Um, Go ahead. I, yeah, I, I just when she was talking, actually, he gave me the scripture beforehand, but she actually, when she was talking, it brought it even more to light. And in 2 Corinthians chapter 3, it simply mm -hmm. says, in verse 18, it says, but we all with open face beholding as in the glass, the glory of the Lord are changed into that same image. And it says from glory to glory, God mm -hmm. ascends. And it says, it says, even as by the spirit of the Lord. And, and I think sometimes we're not careful with this, we we forgive that it's the you know we we leave the, sometimes we leave the Holy Spirit out right 
And we can, you know, we got to be, because he knows where we need to go. He knows where the church need to go. Also, to count, to, to piggyback off of what uh, uh, Pastor Danielle said, when she was talking about ascendancy and how we do at different rates mm -hmm. and how it's going to look corporately, what he gave to me was when he told Peter, when you are converted, strengthen the brethren. And mm -hmm. so part of our ascendancy is going back and reach back and where they are and help them, uh, 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 if I could say this terminology, recovering of the sight to the blind. Because mm -hmm. uh, sometimes it, through this journey, we lose sight of stuff. And so our job is to go back and help our brothers with the power, through the power of the Holy Ghost, to retain sight, to strengthen the brothers so that we are a co cohesive unit. So that not only can I ascend, but I'm going back to help you and build you up so that you ascend and then we ascend as a body. Right. That's good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, um, it's so um, that Minister, uh, Pastor Gwen, when she's talking about that, and you, we, we, we all know about, and I, I'm glad you brought it up, depending on the Holy Spirit. And it, um, I had another conversation with a friend of mine about these, um, the giftings. We're not talking about the call, the called gifts. We're talking about the other gifts. And um, you know who came to mind about what God's love looks like physically is Mom Phyllis. And I want you to talk about something um, because y'all know my folks will grab anybody. I don't care if they just in the church for the first time. She will grab any, she will make her way or say, yeah, she does. She told, and I, she's, and she's done this to me. Pastor Charles, go get that person over there and tell them I want to see them. <laughs> and, you know, my folks, I want you to talk about as, because you've been with the church a, from a, to conception about um, ascension and from a love aspect. If she is, um, can someone unmute you? Oh, actually, I can unmute you. Hold on one second. Yeah, well, yeah, just Hold on one second. I'm going down the list here. Here you go. Oh, are you able to, un is, is your daughter next to you? Yeah, she yeah we go. There you go. There you go. Talk about Talk about um, the, the, the love, the ascension as, as it relates to love. Love yes. is pure. Mm -hmm. Love is clean and love is kind. And the Bible says we are to love each other, not because of your race or your color or where you're from. Love is from the heart. It's not a mouth thing. Mm -hmm. love comes from the heart you love people because God loved us and we have to love them in that way and loving them is speaking kindly God's word to them encouraging them when their heads are down let them know it doesn't have to stay down because of the love of Christ it can be lifted up love is patient Love is kind. And God wants us to love each other the way he loves us, caring for each other. Mm -hmm. Someone is sad, you speak love to them. You speak the word of God. You don't knock them down. You don't badmouth them. You encourage them in love. And make sure you're doing it from the heart, the heart of love. And when you see them down, you raise them up and you encourage them to let them know how much Jesus loves them so they can continue and not look back, but press on towards the mark of the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. So love is the number one. We can be saved and have all kinds of degrees, but if we have love, we have nothing because God wants us to love everyone, not only the members of household of faith. But when you are walking down the street, see someone limping, you go across and you show them love. You minister to them. It, it makes a difference. That's what love, God's love. And love is beautiful. Love is pure. Love is kind. And when you love, you don't have to know someone to love them. Mm -hmm because of the love of Jesus. You know, sometimes I see people and I just go up to them and I love them. Let them know, Jesus loves you. 
and it gives you an opportunity to minister the word of God to them in love. That's what I say, you know, love is kind, love is gentle, love is sweet, love is patient. And that's the kind of love that God wants us to have, not only for the members of household of faith, but for the people up there, that the guy who is drunk and staggering, go mm -hmm. give him a grab, hug him, let him know Jesus love him. Someone is smoking, just, you may not like the smoke, but you go into them and you, you minister the word of God to them. And you know what? They turn around giving their heart to the Lord because of what you do in love. Love and kindness, that's the kind of love that God wants us to have for each other. Amen. Because love is a tough thing, you know, as we ascend, you know, as, as, as mom mm -hmm. Phil said, because a lot of people say it, but, you know, exemplifying it and, you action. know, loving them back, yep, action, loving them back to a place where mm -hmm. they know they love. And um, I was, um, I missed one yes. of the, one of the um, studies the other day and I got so excited and this, I don't, I'm not trying to embarrass nobody, but I got so excited when Sister Jody was showing um, what she had on her, was it your cabinet or something? Because I, I missed that Jody. session. So I, I went back and watched it, but I could feel, I could feel when, when I What's saw her talking, I could see there was a different level that you had to send it to another place that God has mm -hmm. done something in you. Can you speak on that? Mm -hmm. So um, I'm always so nervous to speak, sorry, because I've been had something to say, but I didn't. But um, I make those charts for my children to help them learn um, better. And I always add love to it because I just feel like, you know, that's something, that's, that's how I would want to see it. And to piggyback off of Mom Phyllis, um, love is long suffering to me. So, and also I feel like who we are is what draws people to the Lord. So for instance, like, you know, people, people want peace, people want happiness. And the best way for people to want it is to see it in someone else. And then they'll want to know who the source is. So it's not so much as to, a lot of people feel like Christianity is such an exclusive, um, you know, it's not very inclusive. They feel like, oh, you know, they're better than me or I probably don't fit in. I know because I used to feel like that, mm -hmm. but the more I ascend in Christ, there's things that I do that I realize that God is like showing me, like say someone that I used to be at odds with or someone that has an idea of me, I'll do things for them. And it's not out of like, it's out of a good place. It's out of a place where I want to serve. And I want to show them that no matter what it is that we've been through, I'm still here to serve you. And that person that looks at me like, wow, well, I did her wrong and she's still here serving me. So, mm -hmm. you know, like what, like, what is that? You know, cause that's not the normal reaction. So I feel like it's also just not to have the normal reaction to be called out of the world, not to, have the same reaction that someone, you know, curses you out, then, you know, the normal reaction would be to do this or to ignore them, or, you know, probably not even to curse them out, but to ignore them or to separate. Whereas, you know, the other response from a Christian would be to, you know, how can I serve this person? Like, Mm -hmm. How can I be of, you know, how can I be of use? Um, I realize that we don't live in this community alone because there's a lot of times where I want to start things and I'm like, Lord, you know, I feel like you're leading me to start a Christian girl group. And I got, I heard the Lord even tell me today, like the group or anything that I want you to start 
is so that you can be the funnel, like almost like at a job or anything else that you do. There are people that have different belief systems, but we all have to live amongst each other. Our children go to the same school. We go to the same stores, you know? So with that being said, I just have to be that example of Christ in whatever establishment I'm in so that people can see me and say, wow. And sometimes that can mean something like, you know, refusing to do something that everybody thinks is okay, or, you know, just taking that stand or being of service when, you know, it's really not convenient. I feel like it's those little things uh -huh. that allow us to show who Christ really is because then he brought me to the Samaritan, like, you know, who is your neighbor? God could use anybody. So it's not, you know, you, you have to be, I'm really like, I don't, I don't judge anyone because you never know who Christ is choosing to use to even teach you, you know, to teach anybody anything. So I just try to operate as an ambassador of, of Christ wherever I go in whatever setting I'm in. Even when I feel like I'm wrong, even when I feel like, you know, this isn't fair. I know that God is working things out for my good. I know that I don't understand everything. So I just keep pushing through with the abundance of love that he's blessed me with. And, you know, that that draws people to me a lot. I've always, you know, had this kind of personality that I'm very nurturing. I'm very caring. And that is the way that, you know, people see who God is through me and wants to know who Jesus is. Amen. And that's why I put that in all my things that I do, like, you know, whether from a poster to anything, I'm always drawing hearts and butterflies and sunshines and clouds, because that's what God means to me. Amen. 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 So, so, you know, it, it, even in all that, he does that. Yeah, I was, I was the, <laughs> I was the, that's all I did. We, we, oh, you're fine. We, um, we all, we all grow, grow together. Um, are, and everything that God has given to each and every one of us individually is meant to help somebody else. There's a lot of things that we do, like like Sister Sister Dana. She is a nurse practitioner, right? Yeah. And, and yes, you do it as a profession, but you're you're helping people. But you also see it from another perspective that a lot of nurse practitioners don't. And you see things on us in an, an ascension way where our health is connected to our spiritual life. Um, can you just give me like a few things on that? Because because as we're seeking God and following God, God deals with our health. We if we're not healthy, we can't do nothing. But you know, we want to pray God to restore our health. But how do we, how do we seek God in that as we ascend? Um, definitely. Um, our spiritual lives are directly connected to our physical lives so as we and and it was interesting because earlier you talked about um examination and mm -hmm. sorry if my screen goes dark but i just wanted to pull up this um uh if i could still find it there was a good um yeah i can't find it that's okay uh it was a good definition of examination because that's what we also use in healthcare right? Mm -hmm. A physical mm -hmm. exam, somebody's mm -hmm. coming in. So it's a way to evaluate someone's progress. It's a way to evaluate um, where their, what their status is from, this is from a health perspective, but you were talking about that earlier, even from a spiritual perspective, mm -hmm. we have to make sure that um, what we're doing physically to the temple that where the Holy Spirit resides is coinciding with our uh, the goals and the visions and the the will that God has placed within us to the calling that He's also entrusted us with. He's already imparted into us spiritually all of what we need in order to um, succeed and thrive in Him. It's just a matter of us tapping into that. And sometimes we put up our own roadblocks physically, um, whether it be that we physically can't do something that God needs us to do. Cause I was, matter of fact, I was just talking to Terry about this earlier today. 
I really enjoy traveling. I'm looking forward to doing some more traveling specifically relating to like mission type things. Mm -hmm. And you physically have to be able to travel mm -hmm. because when you're not well, um, if you, you sometimes can't tolerate the elements and the circumstances that you may be in and, and used in. So for example, um, I've been to Africa on a medical missions trip and it's really hot. And mm -hmm. if you're not prepared, that could cause you to not be able to minister to the full capacity that God wants you to, mm -hmm. you know, so even acclimating yourself with physical activity, um, making sure that you go prepared, like hydrated, for example, something as simple as that, eating healthy before you go so that you can help to, you know, because also there's other um, uh, things that could be in the environment that you could be more susceptible to just because that's not your normal environment. So, mm -hmm. um, and, and sometimes you have to take different vaccines or what have you, even medications to help prevent you from getting some of their local um, uh, conditions, mm -hmm. you know, that we may not be familiar with. So, so being prepared physically is just as important as spiritually because they're tied together. And I also think the biggest thing that causes that tie or that link is also our mental health because we oftentimes forget to really look at that from a more critical perspective when we're talking about it for ourselves. So when we do an examination of ourselves, we also need to look at both our strengths and our weaknesses, understanding that God makes up the difference in our weaknesses and our strength, he just intensifies. So I hope that answers your question or addresses uh, what you were talking about. Yes, it does. And you know, because you know, that's the other thing that I was reading today about the uh, mental health. And when it talks about your emotional intelligence, it was a thing in there about uh, mental health and how we need to take time for ourselves. You know, Absolutely. even in ascension, and even in ascension, a lot of times, a lot of um, somebody was saying about it was an article that or something they put out about pastors burning out. Well, there, in some cases, some pastors burn out because they don't use the people to help them. In some cases, not all. In some cases, you know, it's just, we don't know what it is, but there a lot of times if we don't take time for ourselves, especially, uh, you know, just being a human, you just have to take time out for yourself and then let alone work in a church. And mm -hmm. then, you, um, you know, I, I'm always boggled by, you know, people who are tough in the streets, but they get sensitive in the church. <laughs> like that kind of like I'm like okay you were tough out there but why you, you God can still use your tough side but he uses it in a different way <laughs> you mm -hmm. gotta curse them out and fight them but you can fight you can fight spiritually because it's, maybe it's the spirit that you're fighting that's coming against you and you know our our mental health and wellness is is I mean where we're at in today's world Danielle um Pastor Danielle Halley can speak on this a lot too mental health I, I mean there is so much going on and I, I you cannot tell me that a lot of it is not tied to mental health mental health and wellness absolutely and I just wanted to just say a quick thing about that whatever our we thought we were good with prior to the pandemic mm -hmm. that has truly intensified um, so some people who thought they were coping well before don't mm -hmm. realize that they're overstressed now because of the added pressure of all the different changes and things that the, the pandemic has brought. And mm -hmm. it's important to address them and identify them because if you don't, you know, it's just like um, a festering sore or something. It, it, it can permeate more than what you want for it to if you're not addressing it. And there's nothing wrong with seeking um, good godly counsel, talking mm -hmm. to people. And um, I remember going to a women's conference one time and it was uh, like the, our, our bishop of our pastor who was speaking. And she was like, sometimes you got to take a pill, a nap, or um, a break, you know, like sometimes you got to do some things uh, until you can get over that hump. Um, and then sometimes it's a long-term process for some people. So we just can't overlook those things either. If you have high blood pressure, yes, there's absolutely things that you can do to help lower your blood pressure that has nothing to do with medications. Um, however, there's also a genetic component. And if mm. we 
you know, sometimes you're on medication long term because of that genetic component, even if you're eating the healthiest and doing everything else that we recommend. Same is true with mental health. There are times when you have a situational occurrence of something that either causes depression or anxiety, because we all have those feelings. It's just a matter mm -hmm. of some of us cope with them better than others. And then sometimes you have the situation where it's a more long-term um, process for an individual, in which case, you know, there are medications as well that can help with that, along with the counseling and, and so forth. Um, and then food is directly related. I had two patients today who improved based on their change in their diet, their mental health improved. So what we're taking in makes a difference, both physically, mentally, and spiritually. Amen. Danielle, can you speak on that? Because I, I do believe in this season, in uh, Ascension, your mental health has got to be your number one, like God first, you, you know, all those other things, but your mental health has got to be on the top of that priority list also. I'll, I'll, you know, say something briefly. Um, I think Sister Dana did a, Minister Dana did a wonderful job. The only thing that I would add is, you know, that the triggers have changed for people. So because mm. um, a couple years ago or at this point, <laughs> their mm -hmm. lives, the pattern of life has been, had was different. You were out more, seeing people more. And so if you're, you have social anxiety, it might've seen, this is great. This is for somebody who has social anxiety, you know, being on Zoom and things like that would have seemed like a paradise. However, if you mm -hmm. isolate, that actually exacerbates your symptoms. It doesn't get better. And so a mm -hmm. lot of things, I think, like she was saying, um, people haven't realized how, much they have have kind of drifted into not a safe zone because they mm -hmm. don't they're not constantly hey if I stay at home at my computer all day and not watch my situation I'm okay because I ain't got to go nowhere I got to see nobody that's still not normal behavior <laughs> so we right. have to kind of readjust to that the other thing that I that I'll say um maybe about 10 years ago they started this conversation about biopsychosocial um assessments and in, in and therapy offices and social work, uh, you know, practice is kind of asking people how they are on all levels because wellness comes in multiple levels. And they've they've recently most practices have added that spiritual component because we know that you can't if you improve in one area and not the others. Um, mm -hmm. It kind of again, like I was saying earlier, it level sets you. You're only set at that lowest bar because you can't move any farther um, based on that homeostasis everything has to be on the same same plane and so I just I always encourage people um to utilize the mental health services that they have mm -hmm. um and if you don't know what they are I, I will I always offer my information to help get people connected because I might not be the one to be able to do it um because mm -hmm. of confidentiality and boundary right. issues right but right. I always right. will refer them to someone who could possibly help whether that's a, a trained pastor or someone mm -hmm. who is a Christian that has their credentialing so it's really important and again it can it can really hinder your other progress like if you don't have those things happening simultaneously so right. you pray you process you pray you process you progress right. you start all over um right. and, and it's and it continues like that and i'm gonna have to hop off in a second pastor charles okay. because i have That's a session right. tonight but i wanted to say that i appreciate you being able to open up the dialogue because mm -hmm. a part of what happens is we hear these things and then we don't process them so i right. appreciate that amen and um you know as we ascend in god is so important i mean because i feel like a lot a lot of people um as we look at, even when you look at social media, even if you have it, whether you don't, whether you see people notice the world around you and you're um, uh, being aware of what's around you, there's a perception that everything looks good in people's lives. People always wanna show you the good part of their life. They always wanna say, when you say to them, oh, how you doing? I'm doing all right. Um, I'm moving on with the Lord. You know, I'm saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost. You know, and a lot of times those are just words that are saying because it's something that they're hiding um, or it's something they don't want to share. There's sometimes we don't feel like we, we can trust people, you know, and, and, and as we think it's just um, ascension, I just happen to turn my Bible and I have an asterisk in um, my old 
my Bible's kind of falling apart. I had to get another one. Um, um, uh, First Corinthians uh, two, but this fifth verse talks about um, that your faith should not be in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. And so a lot of times we say things, but it's what we know, but we don't say things in the power of whom God is, or we don't call it in the power of whom God is. We say it, but as you say, as we, as we go to apply it, or as we go, like you process, you pray, then allow God to do it. And because we are on our own timeline, we don't look at God's timeline and we don't look at God's process. So we don't look at what God has said in the past. And then also there is like, um, just like there is conditional things that we have to do. A lot, a lot of times there are parts of God's process that we, we have not done, um, you know, in order to get to to the next part of God's process. And it's that, you know, that's when we, uh, you know, that's part of the application. Oh, I'll apply this because this sounds good for my life. But if God told you, like you told the man to go down in, into the dirty water, some people gonna skip that process. Some are, oh, I'm, I'm not doing that. I'm not doing that. But that's part of the process. And part of the process is not easy. Um, we know part of the process is getting down and dirty. Like, it, it, like if you read from anywhere in the Bible to the end of the Bible, everything in um, the healing, deliverance, being free in God from whatever issue, there was a lot of dirtiness going on. People got dirty. They got their feelings hurt. They got discouraged. They got encouraged. They got lifted up, you know, and it, it was those, all those things are natural progression. And, and as we look at the Bible, like even our own insecurities, even look at Moses, he couldn't even speak well, but he thought he couldn't lead the people because he couldn't speak well, but yet, God supplied him with someone who could do it for him. And even in that, he still led the people. And so sometimes we have to utilize, and that's why like y'all know me, for those who don't know me that well, I love when everybody participates because you have something that we need. And in an in, in ascension, and you know, I've been in ministries where if they're not titled ministry people, you ain't got nothing to say. You, you don't have nothing to say. But the very thing that, that the little sister who's probably 15 years old, but, but because she's not a prophet or she's not this or she's not that, y'all won't allow her to say, could have set everybody free. And so I really believe in a unified ministry. Um, I, I, y'all know, those that know me know, I will call, I will pick, I will not pick the normal, as you always say, because I like to hear what everyone has to say. Because you have a piece of this puzzle, as as um, I think it was Danielle Mitchell talking about about the board uh, about the border of the puzzle, and there's a everybody's has is a part of this puzzle, and your piece fits, and it's part of the whole picture, and you know as we ascend, um, I don't want anybody to ever think, and our ministry is like this, Bishop makes it so and allows it so that the atmosphere is so that you you should feel comfortable knowing that God has spoken to you. I know some people get intimidated because they're not used to saying something, but I want you to take this in mind. When you hear the Lord speak and you know for sure enough that the word of God or a message of God, I don't care if it's a picture, a vision or something, if God tells you to say one word, you don't know what that is for the person. You might say, well, they told me to just say, so what? And that phrase, so what, will set somebody free. And you may think, oh, it's just, a, just God just telling me, so what? Many of us probably had that encounter, probably even been on a side of giving it or receiving it. And God, in this ascension time, be, be always open to what God's going to do for you, through you, with you, to you from other people and you vice versa as God re revelates and he downloads because somebody is walking around and you know God and God has given you the word. He's giving you scripture. He, he probably just give you the, just the, just the act of hugging, hugging somebody because you never know just that one act, that person probably never been hugged in their life. You don't know. And as we ascend, 
we're, we're going to another level in the spirit realm. We're going to another level in prayer. We're going to another level in our study. But also remember, we're going to another level in our mental capacity and our emotional uh, capacity. We're going to another level, even in our physical um, being, we're going to another level. And you, you should be um, open to whatever God, whatever you say, do. I'm going to do whatever you say, say, God, I'm going to say, and God, I'm here to receive also, because we, we, the spirit of what, what, as uh, all of us as Christians know, it's a give and take. And a lot of it is receiving. It's not always giving a word. It's sometimes we just have to sit and receive. Some of us may be in a space of just receiving, you know, and, um, you know, it's all in the, it's all in the power of God. It's his wisdom. It's his love. It's his strength. It's his, it's whatever God decides to do, we have to be um, accepting of it. So, you know, I know time is getting away from us. And I, and I like conversations like this. Um, is anybody, I'm gonna give you two minutes if anybody has final word um, about a comment or something. And I, I, I need you to be less than two minutes if you can. <laughs> I just wanted to say real quick, a lot of people on the mental health, a lot of people don't know that God supports mental health um, wellness. And that's only because like, for instance, um, our parents or parents, you know, my parents and people of my generation and even older, we never seen our parents or our leaders normalize like mental health as far as saying I've been to therapy. So a lot of people look at it like, well, you know, God worked it out for them. So, you know, what's wrong with me? So we people tend to look at themselves like something is wrong with them. Like why, why isn't God working through my care, you know, through me the same way he did through my parents. So that's where the mental health gap I think comes in a lot because we don't, a lot of people who, you know, we need to just normalize it more, you know, and I feel like it would be normalized for everybody else that we know that, look, God supports mental health. All right. Anybody else got a comment? I wanted to comment real quick when you mentioned about in your original topic about the seeking and the following piece. Mm -hmm. um, I know I can't speak long, but what came to my mind was in 2 Timothy 2, where, mm -hmm. where, where Paul was trying to help Timothy to be able to transition as a young pastor. And of course, mm -hmm. Timothy um, um, uh, being infected, he, uh, he was very timid, but mm -hmm. yet he took the time to give him two letters to try to help him overcome that. So he had a sense of an ascension there. And, and what he was trying to say here, he says, listen, the things that you heard heard of me, in verse two, uh, 2 Timothy 2, he said, among uh, a heard of me, among many witnesses, the same mm -hmm. commit thou the faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. And one of the things about ascension is that we have to be able to first have a good example to, 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 to premise our basis of helping people to follow us. So Paul's yeah. saying, if you've seen it in me and you've seen those witnesses who've seen that in me, I need you to follow that. But not only do that, get all that and along your journey in ascension, take some people with you. Because one mm -hmm. thing that we, that you said earlier is that a lot of ministers will do it all themselves. They're going to go off the scene one of these days. So we got to mm -hmm. help people to carry as we are journeying up the mountain ourselves, take people with us who are passionate so eventually they can Pass, we can pass a torch to them. Amen. Anybody else? You know, as um as Christians, you are supposed to be able to carry people. Um, we are supposed to be able to carry people when they need to be carried. We're supposed to encourage them when they need to be encouraged, love them when they need to be loved. You know, every day is a new experience. Um, you know, a lot of times, um, one of the girls at work, um, doesn't understand my background in retail and I worked in luxury sales for a long time. 
And there's one phrase that I say at work, I may say one phrase all the time over and over, and I may help 30 people as I check them in, say one phrase, but that one phrase could be the one thing that that person needs to hear that day. And that's, and you know, and, and, and it's just a simple, you know, I hope you have a great day, you know, and, and it could be something simple. And I'm just using that as an example. You never know what someone needs. You never know where a person is in their life. On this Christian journey, as we ascend, um, we, as, as Christ's vision is for us to go ye therefore into all the world. And we have to tell people about Jesus, get a closer walk with him, and encourage them to, to have their own close, close walk and have them seek and follow God for themselves. Because again, when the training wheels come off, we, we do a disservice if we do everything and don't allow people to move in an area where God was trying to stretch them. But we want to, we have to carry them, but there's a stop. Everybody gets on the bus, but there's a stop for everyone on the bus. There's a stop on the journey of life for every Christian. Because again, some people minister to, there's different sets of groups of people that people minister to. And, you know, one is a doctor, one is a nurse, one could be a lawyer, one could just be a, a pastor, one could just be working in the grocery store. You know, there's different sets of people that we all come across. And we have to be in a place of ascension where, if, if, if even if you meet somebody in the grocery store and the Lord tells you to say something to them, say it because you don't know at that time what a person needs, but God knows because the wisdom of men means nothing, but the power of God stretches to everybody. It crosses every color line, it crosses yes. any gender and it crosses yes. every race and it crosses all tongues. The word of God, the power of God it, 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 can, it has no rules. The power of God has no rules because God's power can break anything that people try to set up. And yes. just, just remember, you know, when, when they saw Jesus ascend, they said it's the same manner that, um, actually, let me get my scripture, um, Acts 11, um, 11. Um, I'm going to read this from the Passion Translation. Um, when, we saw, when they saw Jesus ascend, um, Acts 1, verse 11, it says, um, hold on one second. Hold on one second. Okay. They told, wait, they told the startled disciples, the Galileans, why are you staring up into the sky? Jesus has been taken away into heaven, but he will come back the same way that you saw him ascend. And so as we ascend, you know, as we look to Christ's ascension, he, he, they saw him go up in ascension and he's going to come back down and he's second coming. You know, pe we have to be able to have people be able to be ready to ascend. Our job as Christians is to prepare people for the next life in, and the next life in heaven, the, the personal relationship in Jesus so that they can ascend and not get left behind. Amen. 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 Um, um, we're going to close out right now. Thank you all for those for, for you all participating tonight. Um, um, Thank you. Amen. Thank you, Charles. Uh, Thank you. It's all it's all God, you know. And I tell you, Thank when I tell you, you about, you know, God does what He does, and as as Elder Glenn said, them training wheels. That thing stuck with me. I don't know why the thing stuck with me all day about the mm. training wheels coming off. And, you know, God tests us again because we'll be, in, you know, and I'm going to ask um, Minister Terry to pray um, when we, in a few minutes to close, but um, pray um, for our bishop too. Because again, we're, the ministry is ascending and, you know, we, we have to be in a place to be, to be, just be, you know, just be, be also ready. Be in a place that you may not see, you may not see Bishop, for, we may not see him for a month because he's on an assignment. I don't know. We may not see him for on Bible study because he may have to do something else. You know, he's, he, he is an apostle over churches. He might have to, he's going to do some things and we're here with the wheels off, but the, the, but, but guess what? We're still moving in place as though nothing Amen. has changed. So, Amen. um, yeah.
Minister Terry, can you pray and then pray for um, um, Bishop also? Before you do that, uh, Sister Kathleen called me. Her sister's transitioning, Linda. Okay. Okay. She um, so she called me a few months ago. Okay. Can you add that to the list to um, Minister Terry? Thanks. I pick it up to the Lord. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you so much Lord, for this robust discussion, Father. We thank you, Lord, that, Lord, indeed, we're, as we're uh, ascending, Lord, we're chasing after you, Father. Hallelujah, Lord. We're running after you, Lord, trying to catch you, Lord, trying to get, Lord, onto your timeline, not just going up in the sky, Father, but going forward to where you are, Lord, because you're already ahead of us, Lord. We thank you so much, Lord, for the vision, Lord, you've given this ministry, Lord. We thank you so much, Lord, for everyone who is here tonight, Lord, yeah. everyone, Lord, who... Anticipated, Lord, we ask you right now, Lord, to um, uh, bless Pastor Charles, Lord, pour back into him, Lord, everything he gave out tonight, yes, Lord. Lord. We ask you right now, Lord, yes. to bless our bishop, Father. Hallelujah, Lord, as we follow him, Lord, as yes, in the yes, joy, Lord. Yes, we're, we're covered in the dust of our rabbi, Father. So we're asking you right now, Lord, as he's covered us yes. in dust, Lord, Thank now you. we cover him in prayer, Father. We're asking right now for divine health in his yes, life, Lord. Lord. We're asking, yes. Lord, for Lord. recovery in his life. We're asking, Lord, for unlimited energy, Lord, yes. to come his way, Lord. Father. Demons, Hallelujah. Father. Thank Thank you, Lord. To where he needs to be, Father. Hallelujah. Yes, we'll continue, Lord. Lord, to pray, Lord. And we look forward to the miracle, Lord, yes, fearing from again, seeing him again. But we also pray, yes, Lord, for sister, uh, sister Kathleen's sister, Linda, Lord. We ask right now, Lord, yes, to, to give their family the peace, Lord, get understanding, Father. Hallelujah. But minister mm. to them, Father, Lord. Lord, do, do a work, Lord, in their family, Lord, mm. because of this uh, person transitioning and sister, Lord. Hallelujah. And Lord, welcome yes, her back God. home, Father. Hallelujah. As, as she's on her way, Lord. Just like uh, Pastor Lord. Charles said, Lord, we're all on the bus, Lord. And, and we, there's a stop for each and every one of us, Lord. This just happens to be her stop, Lord. So as she's going on off on her stop, Lord, we ask, Lord, that you bless her, Lord. Bless her family as well, Lord. Lord, continue to bless mm. this ministry, Father. Us prayer tomorrow, Lord. Anything that's going to go on or this weekend father continue yes, Lord, to God. do a work lord in ardmore and the holy ghost corner on athens yes. Jesus name. Amen. 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 Yes. Amen. amen amen again